Hello everyone, it's Reese here from Graveyard, and today I'm going to be telling you about most of the Unreal Engine variables. So, uh, let's just hop straight into this, don't want to talk for too long. Okay, so, I'm just going to be explaining them, how they work. So, let's create a variable. Let's start with Boolean, the first variable. Let's just name this test variable. And trust me, you are going to want to use variables in Unreal Engine. At at least one point of your game, you will need to use it if you're making a good game. So, let's just start with Boolean. So, we click set. There's just this checkbox. That is true or false. So, um, a Boolean variable is true or false. So, if we drag this out and we made a branch... You can see this thing that says condition. If you drag it into the variable, and then drag this out, we could do like, if the player presses the E key, well, this is the level blueprint, so it's not going to work, but, um, well, it might, but I'm not going to test it. So if we did like, when the game starts, if the player has a key or something, you would play a secret cutscene. I don't know whatever but that's uh, pretty much how booleans work just that's it and you can change the default value to true or false um but yeah so boolean that's about it that's about all you need to know it's true or false you use them in branches and stuff most of the time okay next i'm not going to be doing byte because i'm not sure myself it says 8 bit number but i don't know Let's just go straight to integer. If you don't know what integers are, they are whole numbers. So if we tried something like 5.3, it would just go to 5. So a vi uh, an integer is just a whole number. So yeah, that's about all you need to know. So if you wanted like a money system, so you do like if the player presses a certain button on a GUI, let's just say that happens, then you have a branch. And then you get out a condition. And then you could do greater equal. And just get this. And then change this value to like, it costs ten dollars or something so that's like pretty much how you would make a money system and then if it was true you could have like whatever like you buy the item here and if it was false you could do like it gives you a little message saying like you don't have enough money or something so yeah that's integers now float float is pretty much an integer but instead of whole numbers you can do numbers like negative five or 5.5 .5, stuff like that so that would be used for like weapon durability and stuff um name kind of explains itself it's a name so you can just change the name i'm not 100 percent sure what you would use the name variable for i'm guessing just names of things maybe i mean you could definitely change the value so if you wanted to change the name of something after the player did something, you could do set name to like, I don't know, anything, name, something. I'm not sure, but that's helpful for that. So if you had an NPC and you wanted to change his name in the middle of the game, you could use that. Um, next is string. String is... Um, so there's the print string node, print string, and then in string, if we put this in there, and we clicked this, and we could set the value to like high, then we do event begin play, and if we compile this and we head out, then we play and it says high up on the top left so yeah that's what a string variable is so now um, text pretty much explains itself it's text it works a lot like the name node so 
you could like change text on certain things if you uh, you can use these for GUIs too I think I mean yes of course you can like I can't remember how to do it but I know you can do it um, vector this is for like locations and stuff um, so if we set it you can see there you could like change the XYZ value. So yeah, vector is a location. So if you wanted the player to teleport somewhere, you could get the coordinates, or you could just get the location of an actor, and then you could make them teleport there. So yeah, a vector is a location. Rotator explains itself. Rotation. Transform. I've never used this node, but... I'm pretty sure it controls all three of these values. Um, I'm not sure how you can change it, but I'm pretty sure there is a way. Like, if you drag this out, there's like a make transform node, and then you can change it like this with this node. Pretty much everything is a variable in Unreal Engine almost everything so if you had like an inventory system you would have to have variables for that and then you could use the variables across different blueprints like maybe your first person blueprint so if you wanted to edit first person character you would have like so you have all these things but you would have like all these different variables so variables go, variables are like, they store information. And the this information goes across different blueprints. So, let's say in first person character, we make something called walk speed. And we set it as a float. And then compile that. Um, actually, I think there's already one for well, let's just do like money. Oh, no. Money. And then set this as an integer. And then we would have like. So we have the money integer. So this would be the player's money. And the default value could be like 50 or something like that. Okay, so um. There's. So since we made this the money integer, we can uh, create a box trigger. Drag this up, and then so yeah, there's the box trigger. Let's size it more, and then if we open the level blueprint. Or not the level blueprint, the first person, or not the first person character blueprint, the level blueprint. And then we do on actor begin overlap. And we could do equal and then get our first person character. You can only get the first person character reference in the level blueprint. Maybe you can get it in other places, but I'm not sure. And we grab a branch. And then if it's true, then we could set money. And oh, make sure to turn off context sensitive. So this is set money and you can change the target to the first person character. And then down here, you can do an add node. And then you get or money variable get money target first person character and then however much we want to add so we would want to add like twenty dollars so we do that and then we can do a print print string and create a variable called money amount 
Hey guys, um, recording, or future editing, Reese, here. So, I forgot something. So, I did not save this, so we probably don't have our box trigger anymore. But, I forgot to tell you guys something. Well, I didn't forget. I mean, yes, of course I forgot to tell you, but I forgot how to do it. So, um... My, my brain just does not work while recording. But now it will, so... I'm gonna open the level blueprint. On actor, in, overlap, money. Turn off context sensitive. We set it to, let's do, add. Oh, that did not work. Add. Then we do. So I did it wrong in the video. I dragged out this and like got the money, but I don't think that's what you actually do. Because that would add the value of the money and the value of this. So let's change, let's make the target that. And then we're going to print string. And we're going to get money. for the first person character. Then we're going to drag this out and convert the integer to a string. After we compile this, and then we play. Oh, that is loud. There we go, it says 20. And then if I go in again. Well, that doesn't seem to be working. But, you know, okay, so. Let's get money here. I, I guess I did that wrong. There we go. You can see there, it's showing how much money we have. So that's how you would show like what money you need. You could convert it to a text or a name or whatever, and it would show up on there if you converted it to a string or text or name. So yeah, that's how you'd make a money counter. I just for I just remembered that, so I I remembered it while I was editing, so I wanted to show you guys that. Not just so I don't leave out any details. Okay, so um yeah, that's about all you need to know there. That's how you would make a money system. And uh that's a lot of the variables in Unreal Engine explained. So, and I'm not sure about the byte integer 64 or double ones, but I don't know if you would really need to use those. I haven't seen them used in a long time. I mean, of course, you would probably have to use them at some point, but I have not seen them used in any tutorials or anything like that. So, that's most of the Unreal Engine variables explained. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.